Hi, welcome back to another episode of Stuck in the Nail. I am Daft Hobbit, and with me, I have the boys. I got Hoots over here, and then I got Angry over here. How you guys doing? Good, brother. How are you? Doing great, fellas. So good. Uh, another episode. Another, another deep dive into the FPS world of Star Citizen. Stuck in the Nail is the only podcast on the internet talking about first-person shooter aspects of Star Citizen. So here we go. Uh, we're trying out some cheesy ass backgrounds today. I'll probably just switch mine up because I look like a ghost. But anyway, um, I think we'll kick it off to Hoots. You had some topics you want to discuss. I know Weasel does as well. Who wants to go first? You want to rock, paper, scissors right now? You want to rock, paper, scissors that shit? All right, it's one, two, three, shoot. Ready? One, two, three, shoot. That's it's Hoots. It's going to Hoots. He did a paper. He did weasel. Paid. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, boys. Chris is in the kitchen cooking up a banger for us right now with 323. He's just walking around like Gordon Ramsay. The devs are just behind their computers, and he's just taste testing. So I was thinking I would just vomit out a plethora of stuff added to the uh, release view window for 323. And uh, so here goes. From the top, star map rework, Moby Glass rework, FPS FPS map system, so mini map, personal instance hangars, freight elevators, item bank and unique item recovery, new missions cargo hauling, dynamic crosshair, EVAT2, FPS loot screen, character customizer, visor and lens, distribution centers, love that, Dyma dynamic event blockade runner, reputation for hostility, player interaction, master modes. Boy, oh boy. You love to see it, finally. Uh, well, since you lost the uh, rock, paper, scissors, angry, I'll let you pick which of those you want to start with. Can't, there's no wrong answer for that. I'll do a softball, EVA mechanics. Okay, sweet. Sweet. What you know about those EVA mechanics? So we're going from the uh, traditional NASA, I've got a giant machine on the back of my back, but I don't in Star Citizen EVA where I'm always in a standing position. It's ridiculously hard to get into any ship, any small area, anything that's in space, really. And it comes down to like a fine art of being able to basically put your character onto a pad uh, efficiently without smacking your face into the lip. Read the meal. Um, yeah. It's had several problems over the years. It's one of those systems that we've been looking forward to getting rid of for a long, long time. And uh, now they're finally bringing in this beautiful like dive mechanic where you're basically supine and you're just cruising. I uh, wish I had the little doll that the dude was. Here, I'll use my bottle. Just do, 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 do. That's how we have EVA now. So with that being said, it allows us to do a lot more things. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. I kind of like to open up for discussion. But also the one thing that I'm really excited about this mechanic is the possible future of the mechanic. And that's adding into like the uh, the ability to basically, hi, Mel. Um, the ability to basically jump out of, out of a spacecraft and or be ejected out of a spacecraft and actually be in a supine position and like free fall. How cool would that be if Star Citizen added that? We, you talking belly buster here? Uh, maybe belly buster or just like uh, like yeah, like, supine you know, or like, prone actually. What? Because you're supine. prone. Supine's on your back. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. yeah prone's okay. on your stomach. Yeah. Whatever. I was like, wait a minute. But yeah, I, I know what you were saying. Like, yeah, the, we've all seen the videos of him floating yeah. you know like a missile across the uh space station hall and stuff like that, that yeah it's exciting cool shit to me uh what problems are what what problems is this gonna solve like like you said it's gonna solve the problem of like we, we don't know they hope to solve the problem navigation right that's the point yeah navigating the eva space is going to be a lot more difficult, I think. I don't I don't I don't think it's going to be as easy because maybe how do you how does Weasel, Weasel how do you uh, how do you expect to like board a ship? Like, like like here's the scenario, right? You're going into the port side of the Valk from EVA. We've done this a thousand times, but the new guy, what happens to the new guy? Oh yeah, he always eats shit. <laughs> eats shit right in front of him. we all laugh. <laughs> new guy. You know, and he he comes in crooked and just falls on his ass. 
Um, so how they haven't ever shown is there has there been footage has there been pictures of people like entering a space that yes. i'm unaware of okay it yeah, looks smooth so then it's good looks looks actually really good so what they did is they did a smart thing which is awesome for cig development um so hey, i love the game by the way. i love the game um but so we can when bash you're, it when you're eva EVAing now, uh, or the new system, basically you're coming in, your Superman position, and you're coming in towards the door. As you enter that gravity grid, instead of just allowing your body just to fall into a prone position, it actually now flips you. And it, like you you have a gradual interaction of like your guy pulling back and going into a standing position to put, basically put his feet underneath them. Now you still have to compensate for your feet being able to go underneath you. So there's going to be a lot of problems with people trying to shoot their head where the feet should be. And like on that doorway, instead of being, you know, six feet higher. And that way, when right. they come in, they can get their feet underneath them. So I see a lot of people messing that up. But I mean, people mess the current mechanic up, even knowing that they're standing. So, yeah, that's true. Um, that's interesting. Okay. So I, I personally think, again, let's give them some leeway. This is going to be everything that they release in the game is version one, right? Yes. It's going to be reiterated. <laughs> even the topic that I'm dreading today that motherfucking scope glint is going to be version one coming out yeah. like. but uh okay so now leeway right i i'm wondering what problems we're going to have from an fps standpoint what are we going to run into right uh what do you think the actual delivering of that is they've shown us something but how is that going to equate into the verse like also, is it going to be smooth no no i mean it'll be semi-polished but it's not going to be smooth there's going to be yeah. a load of bugs that happen especially once it goes to from evo to live there's always the amount of issues that evos are like the you know, the testers of the testers but they like somehow still can't like do the things that like well there's not many evo caddies do. <laughs> yeah there's not many evo caddies like pushing the game to its limits like uh like a lot of orgs are us included i mean you want you want to see how something's broken you should give your you should give it to griefernet <laughs> like you should give it to other org uh you should give it to us like how do we play with it how does an org of 50 people loading a carrick from eva how does that work um what mechanics are going to be an issue i also interestingly enough uh the gravity grids are what concern me because they star citizen has these invisible walls at choke points have you, you've noticed and so we're, we're basically talking about that, essentially. The EVA mechanics, we're going to leave EVA space and enter a gravity grid. And it, it's not always like this on the ships, but like in a bunker, there's, there's these little invisible walls, right? And then on a Carrick, I was looking at the footage of us doing that PvP op. I just posted it on the BP YouTube. And it was you and Lord Vicious. Do you remember that? And you were breaching into the Carrick. I was defending it. And we were fighting three feet away from each other, but the the Carrick has these invisible boxes now over the landing bay. And none of our shots were hitting. They were just hitting an invisible wall. And yep. so, like, if they can't even get the bullets through that, like, I, I just know that's a huge point of friction in the development and in this smooth operation of going EVA to ship. And like some ships just don't have an optimized space for that. And so I think it's going to be an absolute shit show. Is it going to be cool? Hell yeah. I've always wanted to float, you know, face first on something, you know, like do that. It looks awesome, but I'm just not going to get my hopes up that it's going to work well. <laughs> it's going to be a, a nightmare. We might have to cancel all EVA ops for like a fucking patch. Like don't go EVA. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to peg this moment. And if it's happening, I'm going to be a goddamn prophet, dude. That's that's my thing. But the, the thing that's I'm my, betting on. That's that's I'm my thing. I'm I'm betting on so many T1 leg injuries from just how you when you fly <laughs> backwards, your feet are in front of you, and if you're trying to hit the head, you just those feet are Swiss cheese, and so I, I think that's what's gonna. There's gonna be a meta for sort of how you defend when you're in EVA, and you're gonna be sort of strafing back with your feet out in the front towards the target. I can oh. see something like that happening. Yeah, shielding. Then then you are actually yeah, super. I've, I've never actually tried to shoot my feet in star system and i now nah, i kind of want to yeah because you, you you can lay i, I don't think you can can you self-harm can you self-shoot your feet i'm pretty sure you can i mean if 
if you can uh, over if you can overdose <laughs> on med pens, I think you can <laughs> shoot your toe off. Yeah, that's a good yeah, test. Sure. Test it out. Leave a comment in the in the podcast comments here if you've done that. But uh, that's a good point. Yeah, if you're how how is the gunplay going to be in EVA? Well, that's the cool thing about the EVA system too is the EVA system is allowing them to put in the new prone system as well which I don't know if it's making into this patch or not, but it was showing off at CitizenCon. Basically the same system that allows them to basically dive and then pull out a weapon and aim it in front of you and twist and do this. And then when you rotate backwards, it seamlessly pulls you back and like looks at, you know, looks behind you or whatever is the same system that they're trying to use for prone mechanics now, which is also hidden inside the other uh, three, two, three patch notes as well. Um, now you'll be able to basically like as i'm prone instead of having to hit q and e to roll onto my back and look i can basically just move my mouse and as i hit that angle i'm going to start swiveling and roll onto my back seamlessly they showed a lot of cool things from it with like uh system kind it was like that where like as he rolls he doesn't just like you know all of a sudden like, just like go into like the superman belly on the uh you know the prone position and then just like alternate like a snake over he actually like puts his elbow down and like you know cans it um, and the same thing was happening with the, uh, the new ladder mechanics where they were basically on the ladder and they could go one arm off to the left or one arm off to the right. And he was like, you could see his body weight shifting properly. It was I don't know, it's something cool in a video game that you don't see a whole lot. Now, l- let me ask you this from a gameplay perspective. Does this make our life better? I think so. Like as FPS players? I think so. Um, in my mind, um, the way I've always played video games and the way the ones I tend to play the most are the ones that allow me to do similar movements and things that make sense uh, for gameplay movement that other games don't like uh, Tarkov for instance good example of that the body is pretty rigid it is like it's pretty maneuverable like if I'm moving if I'm you know leaning my initial lean is like a, a short little like you know from the hips kind of lean and then if I want to go into an exaggerated lean, I have to, you know, alt E and then it's like, I put a foot out and I'm like now shifting my entire center mass over. Um, yeah. Star you're, Citizen you're actually yank. does a really good. Yeah. Yeah. Star Citizen actually does a really good job of those kind of mechanics as well, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, I, I think the lean needs work. The lean's just like, meh. but uh, yeah, yeah if, if they're going that granular, like games have done it before, like Tarkov has like, has a kind of a more custom control. Same with like ready or not or ground branch. You can hold alt and like really customize your lean based on the, the terrain you're in. Um, Arma does that. Like Arma has more positions than like are taught at basic training in real life. <laughs> you know, like some advanced shooting positions that you can wiggle your guy into and like be sitting from like a low sitting to a mid sitting. Like, so it's it's there. Does that make Star Citizen better? Okay. Or does it just kind of like moot? To me, it's like moot. It's like, that's cool. They're taking a mechanic in a logical step, right? Because EVA right now, I mean, it, it exists, but there's zero complexity to it. You know, you have infinite fuel. You go real slow, A to B. But this actually gamifies in a way that I think makes sense, makes it a little more interesting. It adds more consideration to the gameplay. And as long as they don't overcomplicate it, which I don't feel like they're doing, then I got, I got no beef with it. You know, it also adds into what they're trying to push into, you know, in the future and everything with the push pull mechanics and then even possibly like, you know, possible mag boots or whatever. I don't, I think they're straying away from that a little bit more, which I'm okay with, but I kind of, yeah, but, uh, like with the push pull mechanics and like even like with like as you're EVAing towards like a target or whatever, I say if I'm coming into a, a character way too hot, like they have the mechanic where like your arms go up and they're like, oh shit. And like you brace and you'll like tap it. And then you're like, you know, on the edge of the character with a hand down and you're like, you can like look this way, look that way. And then as they push into the push pull, they're making it to where you like, you can kind of like, you know, do the little shuffle thing and like grab on yeah. the surfaces that like that right there, like thinking three steps ahead, that makes a hell of a difference for the FPS. Yeah. I think. And you, it might require multiple button combos to like actually move across. I don't, I don't know how they're going to map that. Like if I touch a Carrick, do I just hold W and I can just it let my guy like animate? Yeah. But like if I, proximity, like how yeah. close you are to it, you get the sticky yeah. hands, right? And you sort of attach. And then now you're like prone crawling on the Carrick in EVA. 
Yeah. That seems to be what it is. All right. And so think of it this way, too, is like um, EVA mechanics right now, the way when we get engaged in FPS and EVA, we're, you know, you're just standing there. And there's no way to get around that unless you know how to like really finite, like move yourself in a position behind cover. Say it's like in uh, Kovalex and you, you know how to like move your dude and do your kind of your stuff. Now you're actually in a, uh, a prone position. I almost said supine again, my bad. Um, but like now you're in a prone <laughs> position and you it's almost like, like you're flying. It's almost like you're flying, but it's also a smaller silhouette. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on your angle, right? If you're exactly if you're diving through the breach, yeah, then you're a smaller silhouette to whoever's on the other side. But yeah, they, if, they turned us into spaceships, is what yeah, they if, did. I was actually thinking about that the other day. If somebody's like looking out the porthole of the, <laughs> the Carrick, and you're like, you're a completely perpendicular to them, like this. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna so, want to pancake your adversary yeah. so they have a large silhouette while you're just a tiny little head, you know, looking at them. Yeah, and I, I'm excited the for is, it because it's can a good... we torpedo out of the players. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, could you can you <laughs> fit in a side of a missile pod like you know? Can you just lay on the rack like prone or supine on the racks of the A2 and then just like <laughs> drop out? You know? I was thinking more like yeah, some dudes on the landing pad at uh, SBK and you just like coming in sideways, you're like. Wee! Oh, oh, just like it. Yeah, like an illegal hit in the NFL, <laughs> lead with your head kind of thing. Just spear yeah. the fuck out of people. Yeah, spear him. Yeah, that, I'm excited because it, it's good to see like foundational pieces going in uh, that should have been there. I mean, movement is like the first thing that should be considered in a game. It's like how, how, maneuverable, how maneuverable is the player? It, you, you establish the baseline and then tweak it, but like you know, Titanfall versus like a standard Call of Duty game. Like you're, you're moving so fast, right? And I think Star Citizen does have a movement issue in relation to the distance. Like I, I think, you know, try to hit a guy running around in a beacon undersuit. Like dude's a blur. He's a ghost in the way the net code is and all that. It's just, it's so bad the way the servers talk. So I, how do you fix that? I don't know. I'm not a developer, but it's good to see some more movement going in and, and have more autonomy that way. It, it's kind of like a very hyper-realistic thing to do too. So hopefully it makes cool dynamics in EVA. Yeah. Um, and hopefully they next. bleed it into other stuff. But yeah, what's the next one, Hoots? What do we got? I was thinking on visor and lens rework. So um, I, I feel like just with all of this new stuff, it's, you know, we've been playing this for such a long time. I feel like it's going to, we're going to log in one day and be like, someone modded my Star Citizen. Like someone added all this stuff I really wanted. Like, so, so the visor and lens, um, the HUD is going to look different based on maybe what helmet you have. You might have additional sort of metrics for like health and stamina slash O2 and things like that. But, um, I think we're getting a compass with this as well. So, you know, the boys are jazzed about a compass. I, uh, I hope they do it right. Like, uh, to me, like Star Citizen is severely lacking in the science fiction aspects of their game. Like I said last episode, it's a World War II game skinned in a future. So like I I have armor on, but it, other than like the values it gives me for damage reduction, that's it. There's no benefit. I don't feel like I'm not in a spacesuit technically. Like I, there's no threat of vacuum like it doesn't you know what i mean like it's if i get shot i'm fine i just have the med pen if i get there's no like suit integrity there's no and of course that they're planning on all this you know with like oxygen management and stuff like that but um you know we're getting a compass but it's like to me there's just more unanswered questions it's like that's the most basic thing in in any video game is like you got to have a compass and it's just taken forever to do so but like how does that work in the lore? Like, is it every 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 suit just has its own internal compass? Does it go away if a comma is down? Am I tied into a network? Is it like I don't understand what it is, but I, I should have a lot more HUD options. So, what have they hinted at that they're doing or or said? Or you're, we're going to be able to see our 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 food in a different way? Is it just a different rework, or is are they adding features? Like a compass is an ad, right? What else are they adding? You know. Yeah. Mini so map. mini map would be a huge one. Yeah, and you and you lose these things based on what helmet you have, right? If it's an industrial type helmet, you might not have 
um, anything that tells you your, your, the amount of ammo you have or what weapon you have. So they're, they're sort of, yeah, they're making it a little more dynamic in that way. Do you, do you guys see any problems with that, that approach? Is it like per helmet or per style or class of helmet? You know how like a, a ship has, uh, the ships, they have classes and they have roles. And now if you want to wear a certain armor, you're now subject to the role that it's forced into just yeah. like a ship. It so, seems class based. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're breaking it up with similar how they're doing uh, with the master modes. Uh, so master modes is breaking all ships up into archetypes and those archetypes go into that class system, kind of like what we have now. However, what they're starting to do is making it to where an archetype is just a, a profile for a type of ship. So like a light, medium, heavy, capital, large, yada, yada, yada. When that happens, then they have the archetype that they can start with and then, you know, branch off into to make that ship what it's like, what it's strong at, what it's weak at. And it kind of like eliminates the meta a little bit. You're never going to not have a meta, which is kind of my next point. The, the new visor rework and everything where we have military helmets, we have combat helmets, we have industrial helmets, we have mining helmets, we have maybe civilian trade helmets, I don't know, racing helmets. Um, that breaks them up more into an archetype. And I think with this first iteration, it's going to be exactly what Daft's, I think what you're hitting at is that it's going to cause a meta. No one's going to fucking use like any of the other helmets. We're all going to use the combat helmets because what do you use no. really use a helmet for yeah. right Unless now? Combat. Unless there's like a specific benefit you get for a mining helmet. Like right. you don't, if you have a mining helmet or an industrial helmet, like, yeah, maybe you don't have to take a scanner. Like, cause well, you can just scan like with your eyes. Like, yeah, so that's uh, what they're no man's mining helmets. Okay. So yeah, they so. are, they are adding like specific yes. features. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm a little so. bit, I'm learning this from you guys. I'm just been so busy. I have not been reading up. So I'm, I'm familiar with these things, but you guys are the. They're also uh, leaning it towards like uh, I'll say I'll say the medical game word. I'm sure that will like bring a bunch of people to the podcast. Like oh, medical gameplay. Oh my god. Um, but uh, so like <laughs> they're bringing in uh, the medical helmets as well, which are going to basically be able to uh, later on down the line. I'm sure this is going to be in the first iteration, but like later on down the line, they want those medical helmets to be able to tell you like if I'm looking at you, it gives me that heads up display of like what you see right now when you have the paramed tool out. That makes no sense because like if I have any helmet on, I pull out my paramed tool now i've got this nice little i don't know thing that pops up on my ui that's like he's injured in his chest and this is his blood ray over here that will only be indicative of like a combat medical helmet or like a medical helmet yeah. i think that's pretty cool cool but i think they fail i'm gonna be straight fucking honest here man i think cig is fucking failing right now the concept it's not cool it's like what should be in the goddamn video game i get i'm sorry i'm gonna get heated here so pull back my reins in a minute give me a minute and then pull my reins back get that dog again daft it'll calm yeah there you go i gotta chill out i gotta chill out i gotta but seriously man like the concept is cool like no shit a military operator is gonna use a heads-up display but guess what a heads-up display is in real life it's just pixels right so if my helmet has a CPU in it, I can download it. Like, I have a stream deck right here. I, the whole reason I have a computer is so I can put my own desktop. If, if Microsoft is like, you have to use our desktop because your desktop is a work desktop and you can't have any uh, pictures of your family on your desktop. I'd be like, what? Like, let me use it for what I want, right? So give me a helmet that has modules because if I can just reprogram a HUD, it's literally just pixels. So, like, give me a different Moby glass to buy. That way I don't have to signal to the world. Like, if I see Weasel in a combat helmet, I'm like, he knows he can see this data. If I see Hoots with a, uh, a helmet, if I'm a sniper, and now I got scope, Clint, which is a whole other topic. If I'm a sniper, and I'm picking who I'm going to shoot, and I see the guy with a medical helmet, there's no Geneva Convention, by the way, and in uh, the UEE, so just FYI. <laughs> if Who are you going to shoot? Definitely a medic. Just like the ships, they suffer from the same problem. If you're a fighter pilot and you're defending an area and you see a gladius fly in, you're like, okay, I, I, I know what I'm getting. It's a gladius. It's 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 an archetype. If you see a fucking prowler pop in over here, what, what do you think is happening? 
yeah, it tells you. The oh, an Eclipse bomber? I wonder what he's doing. No, it tells you the archetype of the ship. I'm okay with that because it's like a big vessel. Like nobody's out there buying a bomber and customizing it into like hashtag van bomber life, right? Like, but like a sprinter van. It's like it's like a splinter, sprinter van. Like the Cutlass Black is like the sprinter van of the universe. Like, so I just dis- I disagree with you there. Sure, um, and I, hit and it. I'll start I'll start to pull you back a little bit. Yeah, so pull it. Pull. They are coming out with things, and we've noticed through over the past two years, and really the last year and a half, where we've seen like a lot of progression in this this way. And it's exactly what you're saying. They released the Cutter. Okay beautiful little starter ship and everyone immediately and then see it they're like dude that's a camper van everyone wants a camper van version so then they release the second version and it's like the scout and then so it has a better radar suite stuff like that but it it adds just a little bit of a tweak to the silhouette and it gives it a little more functionality then they add the x1 and i know your retort to this is going to be like why the fuck are they releasing two different ships when it could just be one chassis and then they could just make modulars for these ones i agree with you completely I think they're bringing that in, but until they have those for like the uh, the Retaliator, the Warden, everything like that, they're going to continue to make the different variants, which makes that what you're saying. It, it gives you that like, okay, same silhouette, and it, but it's got a different whatever. Uh, I don't think it should, I don't think unless you have a certain scanner, it should tell you what the hell that is, like right off the bat. Rise at targets, like Cutter Scout. Oh, okay, well, that's a radar thing. I'm going to go kill the radar guy so I can take out their CD, you know their command and control elements but uh the same thing i think is what they're getting ready to start with the helmets and the reason they're using those archetypes now is because the fact that they want to be able to give you and and i'll say this too because they have a military helmet and then they have medical helmets and mining helmets whatever you're right why not why can't i just have the military helmet put in you know the upgrade to my cpu and then i have now a medical you know medical military helmet with a mining ui if i want um i think they have to add the archetypes first and then be able to customize it. And the, why I say that is because that crosshair, for instance, the crosshair is only on military helmets. Yeah. But I think so. The mil- those, that crosshair and the options has the ability to be turned on and off. It doesn't just automatically, well, it does automatically show up. I think they're probably going to make it automatic because they're being tested, but you can turn it on and off, which I, I kind of like. Yeah, but I, I could just, what if I had a helmet I could just plug a USB drive into? And customize the heads up display like like uh, with augmented reality, right? Like mm. uh, if I, uh, you know, they got these these glasses now with augmented reality, like the standard civilian isn't going to need tactical data with his team's heartbeats on his like, you know what I mean? So right. it, they're going to use the same model of l- lenses, right? It's the same technology. It's just projected into the visor. And so it's like g- they should really be customizing a Moby glass. Yeah. Let me buy a tactical Moby glass that gives me that data and let me use it on any helmet I want, right? Because it's just a visor. It's just a heads up display. And so that's, that's my gripe with it. It's like, I, I like that they're bringing that in here, but like the execution of it, I just think is horrible. Like if, let me, let me take, why, why would I not want heavy armor when I'm mining next to a, like a, if I'm, st- you know, in the in the Argo Mole commercial, there's a guy like on a data pad and he's like 10 feet away from the laser and he's in like light armor. Like, are you kidding me, dude? Like, that's a safety hazard. Where's OSHA? You know, like get that boy in some heavy armor that's resistant. And if, if there's like a military contractor that's making a military application, there's always, there's usually a civilian application, right? They're going to they're going to dip in multiple markets. You know, like uh, they have different versions of fast helmets that they can sell to different operation groups. They have that level of like a, a cop is going to have different needs than like a certain, you know what I mean? So they have these variants for within the thing, but like, so that's, that's my take on it. I'll, I'll stop. I'll let you guys jump in. I, I'm just like execute this better because the reality is boys, we've been waiting for this game for 12 years. They cannot fail. They cannot do this lazy. And this is lazy to me. Let's just attach it to the helmet. Mm -mm. No. If I want to wear a light helmet that gives me tactical data, let me do it. But I can't. I'm forced now into a helmet. If I want to mine, there's like less options now. I can't even wear the cool helmet I want. I just got to fucking wear a mining helmet. (laughs) So anyway. I I think it would be cool if they locked that's like what you're saying. I think it's a great idea. And I think that's. 
I hope that that's where they go with it eventually. And I would like to see it as like a reputation or like a faction based, you know, software that you could download for your helmet, you know? And yeah. Get like, like a, same, that'd be sick. Yeah. It's like a components. So same thing that we have in like the ships with the resource management and stuff like that. You dial it back into the helmet and say like, this helmet has like two slots and those two slots can be software packages yeah. of what you could buy. That's and what I'm here's the different grades. Yeah, that would be awesome. I think that's a yeah. good reputation based system that they could add as well to basically mm -hmm. like incentivize like, okay, hey, you worked for Aegis Dynamics, which is a military company, right? So you got higher in their tier. Now you've unlocked some of their yes. software shit like that. Like that would be fucking dope. It's like cyberpunk, dude. You can do that. Like yes. you get factions. The factions give you access to certain tech that they've proprietary. It's proprietary, right? Like there's that whole mission, I think, where you can like infiltrate a, I don't know. That's, um, that's the other one, Starfield. You like infiltrate that tech company and you like buy the lady coffee. You're like the coffee jockey and then you end up being like their security. And it unlocks like a, an archetype tree that you can go into and get different mods for stuff. Um, see, this is like very rudimentary shit. It's like, uh, like other game developers that we know, they laugh at CIG because they're just now figuring this out. Like they're going to bottleneck us. They don't. They don't let us as players dictate how the the universe is works. Like I think, they pigeonhole. I think what I I think where I'm coming from, and uh, I think where where Daft is, is like, and I understand it. I think where I'm seeing this as is like everything that we've been wanting and like everything we've been talking about and stuck in the nail for like two years, or at least you know you you and Echo did. Now we're all doing it, the same thing. Like is if they just started with the person, the spaceman, and evolved from there, instead of going, here's a giant spaceship that has all these capabilities. Oh, yeah, what about the little dude? What can he do? Um, I think we're starting to see that now. And I think, like, over the last year and a half, I've seen several improvements to Star Marine or Marine Commander, whatever you want to call it now, where, like, the movement's getting more fluid. I can now hop and vault over things that made sense now. Um, me getting into cover, me going prone. Uh, the weapons are getting a huge rework in this next patch. And, like, yeah, we got Sniper Glint or whatever that crap is. But, like, everything's starting to go kind of – they're rewinding a little bit. And they, I think because they realized they had a huge problem with – oh shit, like our ships can do all these amazing things, but our dudes are kind of fucking retarded. Yeah, and not, not to cut you off, but you're exactly right, dude. Look look at what was promised with Star Marine and Theaters of War that never came out. Why, why do you think that happened? Because the developers that know how to make FPS shit, they're like, yo, CIG, you got these fucking problems. I can imagine this happening in the boardroom. And we've all worked for companies where if you're not a yes man or if you're not on board and I honestly think they were so boxed in this, this third party company that they hired to do all the FPS stuff. I honestly think they were so boxed in. Um, and let me preface this. I'm speculating. I'm just trying to read between the lines here, but like wh why was that? It's just so basic. It's been done. FPS first person mechanics have been done since like the glory, like Nintendo 64 James Bond, Duke Nukem. Like, it's been around. This isn't new. They don't need to rewrite the book on first-person mechanics. They just need to nail the delivery. It's, you know, it's... it's so when we, we talk about, like, I can, I can twist all the way around prone now. Like, that's cool. But, dude, it's like, the where, where the fuck is Star Marine, right? Sorry to get heated again, but... This is where I'm at with Star Citizen, and I will continue to play this game. I will continue to love this game. I will continue to nurture a Star Citizen community called Branded Privateers. This is my, it's in line with who I am. But I am so, yeah, thank you. Yeah, calm me down now, calm me down. But I am so sick of not discussing this correctly. Like, it, everyone can have their opinions, but I'm sick of the wheels spinning. Where, where is this stuff, right? It's, it's out there. It just needs to be pulled in. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. All we need is modularity. If I can play um, Warframe, I can pick any suit of armor and I could pick, all, like, there's thousands of options of mods. It's actually overwhelming. But if you start playing into Warframe, you're like, holy crap, there's so many choices here. There's so many decisions to make. It's, it's too much for me. But there's not even any of that in Star Citizen. They're archetyping us into everything, which is lazy as shit. And so, yeah, I, it, 
give give me the options to take a helmet and put the mods in that I would like. It's so simple. Make the mod, attach it to a Moby glass, put put it in like we already have Tiger's claws. Let me go buy a preloaded Tiger's claw that's a one time use. I can go to I can go to Art Corp. I could buy my own Tiger's claw for fighter pilot combat stuff because I have the reputation with Aegis Dynamics. You know, like flying the Gladius, I've logged X amount of missions in their own ship, like I boost my rep. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. And then I now I have access to buy from like a military catalog, like Red Dead Redemption does this. Like you have to be a certain level to unlock the gun you want. Right. And it's in a catalog. So let me have a catalog for Aegis. What kind of pilot stuff could I have in my heads up display? that the standard pilot doesn't, maybe it's a, a logistics thing. Maybe it's cargo. Maybe I can have like data, you know, I, I, I can have that data on my HUD. I can see where I'm at. I can see the progress. I, I can get access to certain mods by fulfilling reputation for the, the dynamic, for the thing. So like if, if I can just do this off the top of my head, this is an idea that just came to me. Give us a preloaded tiger's claw that I can drag and drop onto my helmet and it puts the heads up display in it. Or let me buy a specific Moby glass from Aegis Dynamics or from Bearing, right? Because I've done enough scopes. I have access to the Crusader security catalog. They realize that we have stocks in Bearing because of how many firearms we've bought. <laughs> yeah. The bearing bottle yeah we, <laughs> like I'm a, f I'm a, I've bought thousands of, of these P4s, bro. Like, you don't understand. I've been yeah. around since 2007. They're so cost efficient. They're only like 800 bucks, you know? <laughs> so, the AKA of Star System. Um, yeah. I hope that's where they're going with like the yeah. distribution centers and everything like that. I can see that being like, okay, hey, now we have these huge centers where like these corporations are being manned out of. This is how you get into their like their systems. This is how you work for them. This is how you gain reputation and reputation X bonuses for it. If they don't do that, this game is not going to make it past the first two years. No. But what's the next one? We got hoops. But yeah, that's, I think that's what happened with those FPS companies, bro. It just makes sense that too much problems. They, they couldn't sort it through anyway. Go ahead. Yeah. Dude, I feel like Chris is advocate because I'm just, I'm sitting over here listening to you guys. I'm like, fuck you salty bastards. Good. <laughs> I'm happy as fuck. Dude. Good. This is what needs to be happening in real life is that everyone yeah, can have I mean, differing opinions and still be the best of bros. Like, right, right, right. It. It's fine. Cause I mean, you, so you can download the mini maps. I think that's where they're going. They, they showed that at Sitcon where they went to Orson platform. They had no mini map. They went to a terminal. Boom. It's in my brain. It's in that's front awesome. of my eyes. Let's go. So I'm not going to speculate on like, modularity of helmets and stuff like that but to me you know i do everything in in branded privateer gear i go mine in the gear i run bunkers i run cargo i race in it i do literally everything in it and so to me it it could seem like it might it may stifle and create metas but also i can see people bringing a couple different loadouts with them when they go on an adventure because they don't you know they don't know exactly what they're going to do or right? what if you had the same helmet four times for mining so you're like i'm still in bp gear like whatever we designate yeah. as an org as our gear right and everybody does that to some degree if you're in an org you know but like what if you had four helmets and there was just a little icon in the corner that told you what you have preloaded so you grab the one with like a little purple icon for mining you grab the little red one for combat it's like you have four helmets on your ship and you're like i'm gonna do some mining thunk new helmet on and then you're same, same, same helmet, helmet type, new, different new abilities, upload, new modules. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Slap a piece of purple duct tape on that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Good to go. Yeah. Like you, you know, and if you can customize your armor sets, dude, like I, you know, I'll have an outfit for every day of the week. I'll have an outfit for every role that I take within our own fire teams. If I'm the, if I have a mod that can enhance the communications of my team, I'll, I'll put a different color on that. So I, I throw a specific backpack or helmet or whatever on. It would be really cool if like you had a mod and, and Angry had a mod and we all had different mods, but we're in the same party. And so we can feed each other that data. Like if, if yeah, like, like different yeah. little antennas on the Morozov, yeah. you know, like I know what modules Dude. you have strapped in because you got a thing yeah. hanging out your head. Yeah. That would be if they nail that, we're that's forever 
Twice. So every, I think Daft's probably mentioned this on the previous episodes, and if he hasn't, we're about to like Galaxy's Edge. Like uh, they do yeah. a magnificent job of showing that there's like these super futuristic soldiers or whatever. They all have the same exact uh, armor. They call it the Legion. Well, that helmet is like their their end all be all. That's like what they're like. It is gives them everything that they want and all the things that they don't want. And if they don't want it, they can just go click, click click i don't want that i want this i want this here i want this here give me that let me take my freaking compass that you give me and don't like don't lock it in the top let me drag and drop it let me take my hydration stuff and put it up here where i can see it or if i only want to see i have a key bind for it something like that like or tie it to the moby glass something like that where i can have the the hud issues that i want and the ones i don't want you can market it you can make everything look exactly how cig wants it but give me as the player the ability to pull that data up or if my teammates are looking at okay hey he's got line of sight on like three other dudes we got this new scanning mechanic he's engaged in this dude and the guy was last seen over there give me like a little like i can i can scan and he knows that there's a guy over there so now i know there's a guy over there because we're connected through the party or whatever i think that'd be that's yeah. how that should go yeah and i don't know how difficult this would be like maybe we should have cat on sometime if he's willing to to talk about this publicly but he's he's a game developer that we know and he's awesome he how like and of course he's not cig so we're not saying like we could do this better i i can't do this better but like, we're just hopefully this this podcast gets out to the masses and starts drumming up ideas and drumming up stuff like hey boys like i'm multiple thousands of dollars invested in this game and i can't even have basic stuff that's been around in fps games for fucking two two three decades you know, like there's got, they have to nail this. And I'm, I'm, I'm happily supporting the game. Just saying I'm expecting stuff. I want this. Cause I, I, I'm not three. I'm not, I'm not multiple grand of three grand. I'm not three grand. I'm not, I don't care if people know that I'm, I'm not three grand in this game. And that's nothing compared to some other people we know. I'm not thousands of dollars into this game so i can just have get pigeonholed into shit that's not what was promised that's not what was speculated like you know they gotta nail this right and doing a scope glint which we'll talk about that's lazy as shit doing pigeonholing it if that's the first iteration then say so hey we're just testing this we want to do it it's gonna it's gonna grow it's gonna be a different than say so but like don't tell me that a helmet is like a static object that like I have to have a certain type of helmet to do something. Fuck. Well, anyway, let's get the game we play. Let's get some advocation for Chris because we do like Star Citizen. We're just passionate about it. So let's turn it over to our advocate Hoots, who's feeling <laughs> the love. I, P PSA, it's an open alpha, right? It's all in yeah. flux. It's flowing. We can we can rag it now. You know we can we can disagree with some of the direction, but. At the end of the day, unless we're close to 1.0, you know, we're right there knocking on it and we're feeling like this is concrete locked in and you still hate it. I feel like, yeah, we, we can disagree with it, but at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff is going to slide and move around and, you know, it's, it's going to change. It won't, though, because they're yeah, making I mean, a single player experience that's going to be locked into a campaign. Yeah, some of the some of the core stuff, right? Yeah, I, I agree, but... So, you know. what happens? Like the P, let's just be honest. The PU is going to be a completely different game than Squadron Forty Two, as it should be. Yeah. As it should be, I think so. Yeah, I mean, let let Squadron Forty Two be what it is. Let it be the timeless thing. Like I, th I think they personally should have kept the old versions of all the ships, like an, an OG, like you know, like because you go on the road today and you see cars from the eighties still driving around, right? Like you see a wide variety. It's not like everybody's got a twenty twenty two model. And so it would be really cool to have like the OG Cutlass Black and the OG like Retaliator still flying around. And yeah, it's yeah, not gold they standard. With, they do but, that with planet NPCs, right? You get Art Corp, you see the old Cutty Black, you see the old. <laughs> oh, yeah. Model. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're, they're just yeah. not for us. They're for <laughs> yeah. the NPCs. Just the like they're, they're, low the, texture. The, the wall dressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The low texture. Yeah. That's all. Awesome. But anyway, I, I want. I want to know, like, uh, if you're watching this podcast and you're like, this Daft Topic guy is a fucking douchebag. You're right. And I love Star Citizen. And I, I will continue to back it and continue to play it. Uh, and I will continue to bitch about it, as is my right as someone who's bought something. Okay? Leave it be. 
let me be. Let me have, let me stand on my soapbox for a little bit. <laughs> also discuss it in the comments. Yeah, and light me up, dude. Bring, it, yeah, bring, bring the bring hate. It helps our algorithm. Oh. But if you agree, though, like, have we come up with some good suggestions? Or, uh, what I like to do is if I'm bitching about something, I'm not just going to complain. I, I want to, like, throw a suggestion out. There. This is, this is the whole reason we started this podcast was to show how branded privateers thinks, how we think about stuff. Even though we have different feelings about the game, like I was getting pretty heated in, in a discord like this. I try not to because we have a lot of new players and a lot of people that are like still stoked. But I, I do like to, I, I am, a, I like to dose people with reality, right? Who sometimes I do it too abrasive, but that's, there are problems with star citizen that need to be addressed and they're not getting addressed. And instead, we're getting stuff like Scope Glint. Maybe we can talk about that. But we'll Scope give it up to Hoops. You're topic. quarterback this home. What, what about a quick nothing burger to me before Scope Glint? Dynamic yeah. Crosshair. Gimmick? Yeah. No? What, how do you feel about Dynamic Crosshair? Can I turn it off and on? Yes. Yes. I like it. <laughs> you, you have a say over it, therefore, yeah. whatever. This camera? I'll, I'll use it or not use it. This camera has settings. I can use them or I can choose not to. But I have options. Fucking love it. I feel like it was just a way for them to differentiate their FPS game from other games. It was like a quick little ad they could... I don't know how quick it was to make, but it's like, hey, we can look and feel a little different with Dynamic Crosshair, but at the end of the day, you know... I Well, okay. dude, to think about sure. it, a future soldier, um, like in real life... Like, this is where I don't know who's consulting with CIG. If they're trying to go for realism, it, what if I'm if I'm breaching into a space station, that's like extremely close quarters battle with a lot of risk, right? Vacuum, all the shit that we know happens in sci-fi movies. And if I'm forced to aim down my sights like World War II, when I have this space age helmet and military hardware that's propriet that's pr proprietor. Or, uh, proprietary. Proprietary, thank you. Proprietary hardware that's like for military operators or for that kind of job. So law enforcement can use it, right? Like That's what's cool about the United States is they have a lot of gear for law enforcement and military. Um, there's a big market for it. And so like if I have a, a helmet or a heads-up display that... In every science fiction, the Master Chief even has this in the books, right? Like every science fiction has it. You have, it's linked to your, I don't have to shoulder my weapon. The same thing with the Legionnaires, right? In that book you referenced in the Galaxy's Edge book series. They, they just, it's synced up. So for CQB, I don't even have to have my weapon up. I could just have it around the corner. And wherever I'm seeing, I can see the reticle on my screen. Is that what they're doing? Is it like an active reticle for where yes. your gun is? Yeah, with weapon sway, the the crosshair is oh, swaying across the screen. Perfect. It's I just like, thought it was like, like a laser without a laser point. I, you know. yeah, yeah, whether or not it's, it's like if yes. it's blocked by terrain or something. Say, so yeah, like I put my shoulder into a thing, and it's like that's my, I, awesome. I think my muzzle's face over here, but like it's showing that the muzzle, the crosshair is like right here. This is where the bullet's gonna hit. I see. So it's like an actual smart display linked to your weapon. That's that's sci-fi. So I was just uh, under the impression this is like how behind I am. So thank you for correcting me. I'm under the impression that it's just a fucking CSGO crosshair. Nope. Like just. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it's moving around the place. Yeah, yeah, it, it shows you that. depth. You know, okay. your gun is up because you're near a wall. It, it'll be. Off I like the that. Because, yeah, that's I'm cool with that. That makes sense to me. That is like active marksmanship. You know, that's I would want that. I, so I don't even have to ADS. I can just hip shoot, which yeah, means. What was that? You can. And as far as I know, Star Citizen takes it into account that your you the weapon is shouldered. So like you can point fire, but you're not like it's not gonna be as accurate as if I like extend my arm and I'm you know fully opted in. Yeah, See, the, the the crosshair shows your recoil, like it shows that it's going bananas. You know how there's a dot in the center and then the the forward spokes, it widens up. And yeah, that's that's it'll your be pattern interesting. of procedural recoil. It'll be interesting to see that in, in close quarters. Like if I turn a corner and I'm four feet away from a guy in real life, like most people in CQB and you can take us to the bank, this will start some comments up. Most professionals don't even use their fucking optic at that close of range. They, they index using their thumb thumbnail, their, their C clamping a rifle. They turn the corner 
I'm already holding it at chest level because I train that way. And the guys at chest level, I just point and shoot. It's really, in, in those environments, it's really important to have clear vision and see your target 100% so you can decide to pull the trigger or not. And so they're looking over their sights or, or they're, you know, if they need accuracy, then they bring it up. So it's like a combo based on how close it is. And, and, and some people train differently. They're like, always use your red dot and stuff. And it's like, if you're turning through a tiny door and you, I'll have my rifle buttstock over my shoulder, like just to get through a doorway and still have my weapon presented, right? There's a whole like weapon manipulation to this. And I, I'm not expecting that in the video game. I'm just saying like these things matter in a CQB. So if they want to pull some of that in, that's a great step in that direction. I literally thought it was just a solid, no. rigid crosshair on the screen. That makes me happy, actually. Yeah, no. So, yeah, I'm not a total Debbie Downer. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. The one feature Def likes in 323. Dynamic, Dynamic crosshairs. crosshairs. That feels Yo, size angry. five. I was thinking you can remove that piece of duct tape with the crosshair you stuck to your monitor. You know, you don't need that anymore. <laughs> Nobody knows about that. Shh. Hey, that's that's proprietary. I could use it. I could, I could take it off. I could take it off. It's mine. That's proprietary. Military, then. military grade. Military grade duct tape on your. <laughs> Hundred mile per hour. Tape. No, that's great because uh, the meta right now in in Star Citizen is you uh, you don't even ads in close engagements. Like if I if I take time to bring an FS nine, that's like a full like second. It's like one one thousand. You're gonna hate the next part of this. Uh, <laughs> so like if I can. Deft. If it's I can time. just turn the corner and shoot. <laughs> no, they, uh, they added times what? to all the ADSs. Yeah, but yeah, yeah all the ADS cool. got increased based on... Uh, is, my, is my weapon still up? Yeah. So if I turn the corner and I have dynamic... If I have a helmet with a dynamic crosshair, I can still hit. I can still hip fire, basically. But hopefully more accurate. Yes. We'll see. Let we'll play around. This, Daft. Mm. What if you turn that corner and you ADS, and all of a sudden you realize you have scope glint? What do you think then? <laughs> I think if it takes a full second for you to ADS in a close quarters combat situation, depends on the optic magnification apparently is what you're saying. Yeah. But if I have a, if I have a reflex sight, I should be able to snap. Psh, 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 right. Okay. On no All matter right. what weapon I put it on. Let me uh, read you guys this. Uh, the, first, uh, the first bullet point on uh, the FPS 3.2. God, I need one, two, three patch notes. Scopes and sights will no longer have blinding reflections on them. So that you don't have optic glint facing towards you anymore. Or if you're in any way in the light. Oh, just facing the enemy. Oh, only on the front of the optic <laughs> facing towards the enemy. Ah, because scope glint only works one way in real life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I know people, I've had to tape cardboard above my optic. Just to give it a little cone of shade on an RCO or a, an ACOG in real life. You just, you could put like a little bit of tape over it just to give it some shadow. Because sometimes the sun's yeah, at your back. Works amazing. Especially if you're set in for an ambush correctly and you're on a ridge line and the sun is at your back or in the enemy's eyes. That's, <laughs> the sun's going to be on your optic too. Like, See, this, I think this is why don't ever join the military if you guys are thinking about it. It ruins movies and it ruins video games. Just fucking yeah. play. Fuck. Okay, so there's Maybe no... That's, op why that's good, I though. like Scope Glint. Yeah. Maybe that's why someone's but not it, in the military. It's got to make sense, well, though. Like, If you guys need consultants, I'm like an hour, like 45 minutes away from the Austin studio. I got you. you. Let me you, know. Not even that. You just have internet. Free. You have you can jump on a Zoom call no matter where in the world you are. No, no you can we're consult. In World War II. We're in World War II. I got to drive. Oh, that's right. Get up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I right. Mean, so outside of this isn't realistic. What what's up with Scope Glenn? Is that the only reason you guys don't like it? No. Uh, Hit me. Okay. The whole point of Star Citizen that they talk about is to give the player the weight of choice, like choice matters, right? But what they're saying is choice matters, but it's fucking dumbed down. I thought, are you, are you going to go mining? Then you better choose a mining helmet. Are you going to go fight? You better choose a fighting helmet. And we're like, oh, choose. I must choose crayons. Like, 
It's got to be more complex than that. Like, I, I, I was wearing a mining helmet, and he pew-pewed me better because he had a fighting helmet. What? There's no choice in that. There's no choice in master modes right now. If you've flown master modes, go listen to Avenger 1 talk about it. I actually agree with him. There's no choice. I, if I choose to run away, I choose to lose. I choo there's no choice. I, I choose to either turn my shields down and die because the weapon range has increased and my speed has decreased. So, oh yeah, you can just get really good at breaking contact. No, you can't. You get sprung upon. Like, there's no, there's no parachute. Like, I need, I need more boost in my shields. I need shields for longer while I escape, or I need more speed while I escape. Like, that's choice. How do I want to escape? Do I want to escape at a slower rate, but put a capacitor of energy into my shields? That's choice. Or do I want to put all that capacitor into speed? Because I know, as a pilot, he swung on me a different direction, and I can exploit that angle to escape. So instead of me saying, uh, do I choose to escape or not? Like, yes, I choose to escape, but how? That's choice. Like, do I, do I, do I choose to put my shoes on? Yes, but what color of shoes am I going to wear? Right? Like, that's we're choice. We're talking about scope glint. We're talking about choice. We're talking about scope glint. So we're talking about decision. Why I hate scope glint is because if you, Hoots, you choose to be prepared you choose armor that's a little bit more conducive to camouflage for the, the, the planet you're on. You choose armor that doesn't have lights. So if you're at night, you can't be spotted on accidentally. You choose to bring all the sustenance you need, all the ammunition you need. You choose the landing zone to go be a sniper and, and shoot somebody else in the verse. Bounty hunting. Let's say it's even just. It's not griefing it's like an actual target on a player you choose all those things your choices don't mean shit because there's a fucking scope glint so now the player that has chosen correctly is now penalized for ex using the choice that matters that cig says this matters but it doesn't, because now, like Battlefield 42, if you ADS on your scope, that player can see you if he is looking at you, which defeats the whole purpose of being a sniper. It defeats the whole purpose of everything. It just defeats every single thing. All the choice you made doesn't even fucking matter. That's why. It doesn't matter. Master modes is the same thing. Master modes is scope glint. It's the same thing. I'm not choosing to escape. I'm choosing to die. I can't escape. I don't have any options. I hit into nav mode to get a, a tiny bit of a speed boost. I, but my shields go down. And also, if you didn't know, currently, of course, this is V1. I'll give them some leeway. But, like, they got to get this right. They don't... I don't think they even play their game, to be honest. We play their game more than them. We understand the game more than them. 100%. So, give me choice. Don't fake it. Do I get to choose a light fighter or a medium fighter? Like, there's, there's choice. Like, do I choose this over this? Yes. Do I choose this? Like, there's more choice in mining than there is in combat now. I agree. Um, it's, cra it's crazy how different our perspectives are on that. Like, even, even on choice. Because I, I, I don't feel like they're taking choice away. Like, I, I, I feel... Like they're adding counters to choices. They're adding gameplay they're, to choices. But yeah, you they're adding choose to do what you want to do. They're adding counters to things that I could easily counter in real life. Like if I was a sniper in real life, I could choose to put a uh, lip balm on a little film of lip balm on my scope to minimize its glint. On my watch, I can reduce that glint. I can understand the knowledge. I can choose to put the sun at my back. I can choose to shoot from shade. I can. There's about a thousand and one different ways I can put a a a, a scope netting over my like the, the with a sniper's cowl that looks like a little net, a mesh netting, a honeycomb. I can do about seven thousand things to take away scope glint. I think that's where it comes in, and that's that is the key point of 
a lot of these things, even with master modes, but it's the optic lint, which is the, you know, the topic that we're on right now. It, it is making it like Daph said, where that choice is null and void, because now instead of me being able to set up and get in a good hide and then be able to like, you know, scan my surroundings, come in for a purpose and do my mission. Where is where I was, I used to be limited to basically like my substance. Like, you know, eventually I got, I got to get out of there. I have to move. Um, now it's, I, the second I opt again on somebody, the second I ADS, I can take one, two, three, maybe shots, maybe get one kill. And then I got to book it maybe because there's going to be ships coming that way. There's going to be all this. And that kind of maybe adds a little bit of gameplay. And I kind of agree with who's there, but until they add so this is a counter for basically care bears and this is people so they go to jump town they can go to spots without the fear of basically a sniper so that they can see the sniper before he shoots which is bullshit but if that's how you want to do that that's fine do it but add a counter to it if that that needs to be base one tier one i came as a sniper i didn't take any other preparation because i didn't set up my my weapon system the way it need to be set up it can be in it with the lighting system and the physics systems it can be exactly as they have it right now any light source any planet day or night there's an optic glint cool that's awesome but add a counter to it make it to where if like i know that there's going to be an optic glint i know that i don't want to move because i have a good angle say i'm in a valley or something and i can't move up and down and i know i want to get maximum efficiency out of my spot and get maximum bullets on target let me put a honeycomb on there. Let me put a shroud. A shroud is a really easy weapon skin attachment and you're done. Or a honeycomb, which is like, hey, my optic has a, an eight times or higher. It has two, I don't know, two gadget slots that can be put on it. And I can go buy a honeycomb for it. Or fuck it. If, say, a honeycomb is too big of a piece of technology and it's only locked behind like Aegis or Anvil or whatever, cool, our bearing let that be a thing but if i'm the pirate guy that can't get in good with bearing and aegis and those guys let me buy a fucking thing of duct tape and it only lasts for like i don't know two to three to five minutes out on yellow because it's harsh conditions something like, you need to reapply add, yeah yeah add that like that that mm -hmm. makes it that makes optic glint like okay like i know that this is going to be a fucking issue and the wear and tear on my rifle because i'm crawling around in the dirt is going to mess up that honeycomb cool I won't put the honeycomb on until I'm ready to fire. And then I'll have you know two extra ones in my inventory. Like kind of what we do now. I have extra mags, extra med pens, Make a helmet for it. Yes. If I can have a helmet that plugs into my rifle or like Bluetooth to my scope, or the, the helmet is the scope that doesn't have a glint, like let me have a counter to it. Yeah, just RoboCop it. Yeah, right. seriously. You know where that thing's shooting. Yeah. This is World War II, man. Like, And it's not even that. It's World War II gamified. Like, I understand for, like, FPS, right? Like, like uh, Battlefield 42, the sniper is so powerful. Like, that's in a match where it's constant action all the time and you're going to die and respawn, die and respawn. Yeah, that makes sense. Balance your game. I can put up with the arcade-ness. That's fine. It's fun. But in Star Citizen, it's not like that. Like, y there's permanent death. So if I, if I go out, I'll finish this and I'll pass the weasel. If I go out... Like Weasel brought up, if I go out to take a target out, like I have to book it. But then guess what? If I've if I'm on foot now, they're searching for me in a ship, and then ship's gonna have scanning. Like and now there's a whole nother game. So now I'm I'm outnumbered. I'm outgunned. Anyway, go ahead, Weasel. If you guys want to add scope glint or optic glint or whatever you want to do, the, I think where this the the break in the the system here it, in the game system is is that that is meant for like an arcade shooter like Battlefield or COD or something like that, okay? So if that's the case, add your scope glint, but add it into Star Marine or like Arena Commander. Make that the the wink, the fucking master modes where you lose your shields and everything the second you switch over to navigation mode. Add that in Arena Commander where it's meant to be arcade and simulated and fast-paced. Do not add that to the simulation aspect or the massive multiplayer aspect of Star Citizen because at that point, you're just, again, you're taking away that choice that, like, that guy is going to make, or, or chick is going to make all that preparation for, and then you're going to just lose it. I mean, what's what do you do next? I mean, like, with the sliding mechanic, are you guys going to, like, oh, you know, people want to be able to shoot uh, with perfect aim when they're sliding because that's their play style. Like, 
no. Yeah. Like, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Well, I don't think they realize, too. Uh, I'll say this, and then I'll shut up, because Hoots needs to speak on this. I want to hear him. I want to hear why he, where you stand on Scopeland. But, uh, like, in military operations, which a lot of orgs and a lot of players want to do, we do PvP a lot. Where I don't think we're like do it the most. I think I think we're an authority in that space to some degree because we do cool stuff. PvP happens like on a large scale in Star Citizen, and this is a complete kick in the nuts to that community because now, as me being a sniper on an Overwatch position, if I'm defending something, if I'm scouting or recon reconnoitering, if I'm a recon. Like a lot of people play this gameplay and every time you use your scope, which is the whole fucking reason you bring a scope is to look at shit from a long way away. There's nothing factored in. It's not, it's not distance related. It's not light angle. Like I could be under a space station completely on the dark side of the room or dark side of the, uh, the planet with no natural light. And I would still have scope. Gl- it doesn't make sense. So I think it's a big punch to the gut in the communities that that do this. It's like, anyway, go ahead. Take it. So this is probably controversial, but I view, I view P6 slash sniper gameplay the same as I do the light fighter meta. Like you, you talk about choices. That's always the first choice. So, I mean, everyone wants that power fantasy of being a sniper, right? And, you know, we talk about they made the right decisions. They got kitted up. They got, you know, chunks of beef in their pocket for when they run out of sustenance out in the, out in the jungle, you know, and, and they kind of get to do that whole sniper gameplay. But like, there's so many other people making different choices for their own type of gameplay. And to me, that's the only type of gameplay that only has advantages and hardly any direct counters, right? If you're landlocked, you're, you're locked to an area let's just use jump town because it's the most obvious thing like anybody can go put some gear on grab a p6 and go just harass jump town like you can play you can start the game day one and have that kind of gameplay and be very successful so i i'm for i'm for mixing that up and i i can't i can't really bring myself to shit on it when i haven't played it right i don't it only happens when you're ads it only happens within a certain degree cone from what you're looking at that person is not probably not looking around for you at that point. So you're, you're generally always going to get that first kill. And so if you kill me at jump town, right. I'm the counter is the three D's. I say, Oh, oh, sniper fire, you know, sniper fire, no, no distance, no direction, no description. Like I, it was the first shot. He had a suppressor and he's, you know, time 16 and he just headshot me. Right. That's not fun gameplay. That's only fun gameplay for the sniper. But that's right. that's like reality though in real I life. Don't give, I don't give a shit about reality. But like, that's this, what this they want. Game. Like No, I don't think so. I don't uh, think they're aiming dude, for reality. Like, look at the game. Like there's uh push pull mechanics. Right? Like Yeah. There's yeah, these that, that, that's, that's movement. Yeah. I mean it's yeah, so like there's this yeah, level there, there are comparisons and crossover, but I don't think yeah. they're at the end of the day, they're making a game. You know, it's you know, I played Fortnite with my kids yeah. the other day and it has bad bad glint like oh it's so very bad. the sun is shining on you right and i don't think that's the way they're gonna go you know i think they're adding choices to it they're adding well this optic you know anything below a times four no glint anything above a times four it scales with the with the the strength of the scope right and it's values that are going to get twinked you know the community is going to be in an uproar if it if it doesn't work out so like i can't quite bring myself to shit on it yet I'm kind of looking forward to it because, like I said, to me, sniping is the is the light fighter meta of ground FPS. Well, I I can't stand it. The meta so. is solo plays. Yeah, that's that's it. Because like, if you have a team, yep. right? If you have a team, like the best counter to a sniper is to have a team and to call out where you got hit from. Hey, yeah, maybe. right well, side like or location. They, now we have a have compass. They have attachments a compass. right now to take that away. Yeah, a compass no and a call flash, out. No tracer rounds. Your best suppressed. friends. Suppressed. So, like yeah. that's I'm, yeah, that's that's fine. Like I I like how it is currently because it it actually favors 
whether it's realistic or not, it doesn't matter, but it's realistic in the sense that like, if I have more people with me, I can counter a sniper. Like we've encountered snipers before and walked away with a hundred percent. Like, yeah, someone got a tier one chest head or head injury. Like, you know, like <laughs> it's like a sniper is going to snipe you. Like if you're not paying attention and you don't see him either way, it, your your uh, your headshot's gonna knock you down. But now, if if I even use that that optic at night at anything, it's a dead giveaway. That's the problem. I think dead dead giveaway. Thing, here's the other thing too: is they're also adding like things that make sense to the uh, a, a nerf of like the sniper rifles, things that should be in the game that I agree with, like um, the fact that anything above like uh, a four times optic uh, no longer has automatic zero. Which, in the future, doesn't make sense. But it's a really good way to make it to where, like, okay, hey, you guys want to be the snipers and you guys want to do this thing? Cool. I'm going to make it harder for you to make that shot. Yeah. I'm going to make it, the bullet drop a little bit more. I'm going to put the, and they say in the patch notes that they've got the ticks correct now. So that now, when I'm at a, a time optic or higher, I have to basically, okay, hey, my target's there. He's, I don't know, 800 meters away. Take it up cool uh right there fire boom i have to watch that round go now where that makes it null and void is that if i take that shot and say i hit him i had to basically be able to one i have to know my weapon system and i have to know the optic but i also have to be able to get into that optic look at the target scale it or tick it up and then basically take the shot yeah. and watch then basically kentucky windage it now and see where the shot lands and then i have to you have That's to stay it. on scope for a long time. Exactly. So with me be doing that, now I've taken that shot. He hears the shot, you know, ring out past him or whatever. Oh, shit. Hey, the sniper, where is he? Uh, Look for the glint. Big, big spotlight up there. Now I can take another shot. I can probably take him down at that point because usually the second round is going to be more accurate because I've got whatever the rotation is and the bullet drop down. And if I'm fast enough, I can do it. But like I was telling Daft, at that point, I have a dude that has the equivalent of Apache gunships and thermal cameras and a scanning system that I now have to get up and, and again, human eye is going to track this because I'm now a, from a prone position, I'm now a standing position and my human eye tracks motion to, you know, sporadic motion to, uh, from left to right or right to left. As I start running this way, now I'm just causing even more attention to myself unless I've already planned out a breakout route, all that stuff. So it, they did it correctly in the fact that they added more ADS time, more optic sway, more, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, proper then, tick marks. Yeah, like exactly. Range. And, yeah. and then they added, like, and then, like, then they overkilled it with the scope blend. So, do you know what I would agree fix? With, so, you agree. Sorry, keep going. You, you agree. I cut you off. I agree with, with Hewitt's in the fact that it gives, it gives somebody the ability to go, hey, there's a sniper over there. I need to go take him out. Because not everyone's like me and Daft. Like they don't have the training, they don't have the the internal uh, subconscious mindset to basically the second we take fire to basically start scanning horizon where like what looks out of place. Okay, hey, where where would I be? There, I, that's where I would be. Let's move in that direction, get behind cover for that now, and then start bounding basically to go counter snipe. Most people and. We know this because when we take new people into branded, where we're like, "Hey, like, why the fuck are you like? You're trying to snipe people, and you're doing, you know, 360s and doing up, down, up, down, up, down, moving this way, this way, this way, this the way." Wiggle, like, wiggle. Uh, uh, of course, we fucking saw you. You're silhouetted up against the back of a, you know, a town. Um, we're like, stay still, and like, oh, like you don't do that in other games. Like, you're right, you don't. Like that's the reason <laughs> I like Star Citizen. Yeah, you don't wiggle. So. Because the reason you wiggle in Battlefield 42 is because you have a scope glint. As soon as you pop one shot off, they know exactly where you are. So a good player will turn and see you, judge the distance from you to your glint, and then they'll take cover and take a different path. And now you got to wiggle because if he has a sniper, he's going to... Now you're, you're just trying to shoot each other's scope glint now. That's sniping. There's no, there's no skill set out of clicking a pixel. So this is why I have a big issue with this. So what would fix it Let's talk about some things that could actually fix it. So Hoots is like, I don't think we, I don't have a problem with scope glint. Well, you would if you were the fucking sniper and you've been waiting there for an hour to get a kill or to kill a guy or a player or a bounty or do the mission or whatever. <laughs> and then, 
And then you're I can't upset. Have a problem before I see it. I, I just I can't. Like I oh, yeah. like I know I know the feature. I I, I know. Well, have you sniped in other like games? You said Fortnite. Do you I, have I a like, problem sniping in Fortnite? Totally Hoots, I pre- I'll just say this right now. I appreciate your mentality on yeah, it because the same. fact that you haven't touched it, you're not like you haven't it's seen one. it in action yet, and you have zero, like you're like eh, oh, okay, like I ha- I will have an opinion on this. This is a hot topic, but until then, I'm not gonna fucking say anything about it. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. That's yeah at the end of the day, when I get when I get my paws on it, yeah, we I, I'll we'll definitely test. I, I'm I may hate it. You know, now let me terrible. let me give you a scenario. Okay, Hoots, you are on a BP ground team. We're doing a PVP op, and you are tasked with setting up an LPLP. You are an observation post on a hilltop. And you wonder, and you get flanked. You get the shit flanked out of you. You get a, all of a sudden you're like, dude, I, I don't know why I got like six gladiuses on my hilltop here. And you look up. Hopefully you have a rail gun. Hopefully not or whatever. Like you, you are compromised. Like, I'm talking military operations. PvP on an org versus org. 50 plus players. Let's say it's maxed out. It's 50 v 50 in a 100 cap server. And you have a weapon that will telegraph your location. What are you going to say? How, how are you going to conduct your observation with any type of magnification in the game of Star Citizen currently? Much like I do now, I will hold F down and I will scroll Will up. <laughs> right. Yeah, you need shots on. You need more detail. You need a little bit more. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's yeah. the point? If you could why do they, that, why do you need a sniper? That? The Gladius on me because they saw Scoglin and they called yeah, it Yeah, they called it in. That's, that's, that's what we would there. do. I mean, we make our own goddamn maps. I can give you a grid location on the map of that hilltop. If I saw Scoglin up there, I'd be like, hey, everyone take cover. Sniper is on the, there's a sniper on Hill 5. And everybody knows the fucking map that we've prepared. Because we prep like this. This is what we do. So it's completely null and void. No one in our org will use a P6. An right. LPOP is exactly. just hold F and zoom in. Yeah, it's it's a change. <laughs> like we'll, think, we'll have to adapt. We'll yeah, have but to I'm saying. Come up with something new. Something now the, that, so I, that's off I the table. That's a bad thing. No, it's off the table. That's a bad thing. We will not use sniper observation. We will use visor observation. That's it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, uh, we used we used a chess piece with with lamps on it for a long time. Yeah, but that's like within twenty meters, you can see it. I can't yeah, see it yeah, at I distance. Know. You know, we've yeah, tested I it. Gotta touch. You gotta touch. Well, I, like, I respect that. I'm just saying. Well, here's the like scenario. Andrew said, I, there, you can add attachments. Like I'm I'm all for attachments. Like if you if if you can have a limited time advantaged attachment that you also get penalized for. Maybe it's weight based. Maybe it's ADS takes longer, you know, like I, I like that choice, you know, that, that gives you a reason to, so to like make a, a decision. That's a so solution. I, yeah, I don't mind that. So something yeah. to, to mitigate your glint yeah, to give you more scope time. You got to replace mm-hmm. it or, you or like it or something. a certain scope only gives you a chance at a glint rather than like a random chance. But, uh, yeah. here's what I think would work. Change for sure. Here's what I think would work. Like, give the scope glint within a certain distance. If you're within, like, 150 meters to 200 meters, where it's, like, really easy to snipe somebody, where you don't have to adjust for windage or elevation, give him a glint. But, like, if he goes beyond and he has, like, what's what's that, where's that skill? Is it yeah. 300 meters? Is it five? So put the yeah. glint at close range. But then if he does the work to purposely be at longer range... And then master that weapon system to put a first round shot on somebody and stay invisible. Different, right? Yeah, the glint, the glint size may be a single pixel on a two K monitor. Like maybe it ah. does have a glint, but it's tiny. Like yeah, really relative to your distance, that could exactly. be an option. Yeah. So now, now we're getting down to options. We love Star Citizen. We love each other. We we respect each other's opinions, and we're passionate about this shit. Obviously, we run a uh, an org that does this stuff we like we this is what we game we spend our free time doing it. so like hoots point is valid he's not going to touch it until he get or he's not going to have an opinion on it until he touches it it gets a hands on it no 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 my awesome. opinion is i like it as you like it so and okay have an opinion so you, it, it, it will it's subject to change though is what you're saying until you try correct it. Okay. correct right so distance could be a factor in the intensity of the scope glint that would help that could be one um like Weasel said, they're kind of making it more difficult to snipe. What what kind of weapon system is it? Like Arma, like Arma Three is really hard to snipe. 
because it's very hyper realistic. Um, so that, that could be a thing too. Um, there's other things. What if this, what if the player keep the, keep the scope glint out completely, but if we go back to the helmet mods or a backpack or a sensor or something like that, that you could put in and convert the sensors of your spacesuit that's so high, high sophistication, right? It's so up there. If, if it could have some sort of sensor that detects incoming fire and it just gives you a, a, a chance, like I took a sniper fire from north, like it, it, it pings it on a compass. It's like an active radar when a shot breaks past you. Because if the sniper's good, like you're not going to see every sniper, even with a scope glint. Like in Battlefield 42, just because the scope the scope glint doesn't make me safe from a sniper, it just gives me a chance. Because so you it's don't a, think shot direction is more gamey than a scope glint? I, I think it's less. I think it's less gamey than a scope glint because in real life, if a round zips over your head, you have a pretty good understanding of where that came from, because so of sound and because of the Doppler effect. Right, like you can hear that rip over your head. A supersonic round going over you'd be surprised if if we put you in a in an arena and someone cracked a round over your head you would be like holy shit it's that way oh yeah no i'm, well, I'm talking about like 3d positional audio though so like on that compass that's in the top you want to like it shows a red little slash yeah where it like came from some like most video games when you take damage it gives you an indicator like we've all played with that that's not like giving away the position that's just indicating to you what you could indicate with your senses in real life. Cause in a game, I, I don't know if I just got shot every time and there was even like hell let loose or squad or these really hyper realistic games, they have that indicator. So if I die, I'm like, Oh, I got hit from the right. I, I want to know where I got hit from at least. Yeah. And like that's, that's in up. the games. Yeah. Weasel eight minutes, eight minutes. Right on. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's 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 something we could do. Give us a tool to do that. Like, if I have a sensor and I've taken the choice that matters, right? Because the sniper's choices matter. And then if I'm a, if I'm out there, and like I have a device, like let me have it in my fucking hand. Like if I'm out, I'm at Brio's breaker yard. I'm like I'm wearing heavy armor. Like, I'm I'm in my ship. I landed and I brought heavy armor to sell illegal drugs in a pirate infested area. That's what. That's who's complaining about this. It's like I get sniped at Brio's Breaker Yard every time I go there, because you show up in a beacon undersuit, right? Like, that's who they're catering to, you guys, not us. So give them some. Wear heavy armor, and run, and dodge, and weave, and be smart, and give us a serpentine. tool. Serpentine. Yeah, serpentine. If I had a tool that could sense, if I had a a, a mod that could sense it, I'd be good, right? This is a this is a key point for like uh, Avenger One. Whenever he's talking about, I'm I'm so so on Avenger, but uh, like when he's talking about like uh, PVP in the verse, uh, he's kind of goes back and forth. Sometimes he's a freaking murder hobo. Sometimes he's like you know the just a car version, whatever. But like what it, his main philosophy on it is that like, hey, if you don't know anything about Star and PVP and like ships, come join our get in our discord come fly, fly with us come fight with us get trained because in in the end of the day you're never going to get good at like counter sniping or knowing where the sniper's at or knowing what tactics are usually used by like fps players or ship players unless you go in there and you do this and daft's right they're catering to a lot of these people that want nothing to do with combat they want this game to be a you know a pvp a pve only sandbox where they can live their space trucker dream and yada 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 and that's Cool, whatever and they're making it big enough to where you can kind of do that but there's also player input and you and when you start doing stuff like optic glints or master modes where you're robbing people of the ability to actually get away you're taking that player choice out of people's hands to make it more pve so that that one person can feel like the superhero you know like i'm the guy like we it, it doesn't work like that though and it doesn't make other players feel good about it when it's like I'm, maybe I, maybe I'm not better than you. Maybe I'm not. Uh, I didn't have more time in the game than you. But I thought about it a little bit more, and I came to the situation better prepared than you. So that gives me a slight advantage. 
and when you take that away from people it just it, it makes people angry um yeah. not everybody's gonna see it like me and daft either and like because of the training that we have in, in real life and what how we see the world versus how somebody else sees the world but don't don't rob that player either of like the, his their ability to do things you know it, it just so you like oh like well, people don't get shot at brios anymore from you know 800 meters out that's right look for the fucking sniper like just know what you're getting into if you don't want to sell drugs and you don't want to get killed by a sniper i don't know maybe like scan the area first we've seen dozens and hundreds hundreds of players when they come into brios they literally don't do shit they come directly in from the om point and they go right to brios and they park as close yeah. you know right on the front the slab and then they open the back door and, and they're they wearing a beacon walk. under suit just like, doop, 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 walk right out and they don't they don't scan they don't look around nothing they just fucking walk <laughs> right out and you're just like well i guess that's an easy kill like yeah and like that's I, that's I think the it'll problem. still be an easy kill in the future though i think i, I agree. think you're always going to get the first kill you just might not get the second kill i agree right? so really like the problem that. is not they're not solving any problems though if they're catering to that right who are they catering to in your opinion who's with a scope glint you know, those of us who are downtrodden and oppressed <laughs> by all of you professional snipers, that's who they're catering to. But yeah, like who, though? Like, they, why don't they ever cater to an orc? Or like a, an entire huge, like Avenger 1 has a huge group of fighter pilots. Like, they should have some say. If that's, the majority of people are playing and dealing with the mechanics that way. They should have, their, their opinion should have weight. Well, Rather I than you, I the solo kind of player. It. So, like, I'm penalized for being in an org. That's yeah, what I feel well, like. They're, they're, I don't think you're wrong when you say they're catering, catering to the majority. I think sometimes we have to step back and realize we kind of are the minority as far as the type of gameplay we like. And, you know, there's a lot of squeaky wheels out there. People that also have the same problems of, well, shit, what's the answer to snipers? Like you said, they're probably not trained. They don't know. They don't have, you know, they, they, they the answer to snipers is awareness. Cover. That's I'm yeah. sorry. I'm getting passionate here, but like, I, I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe, but even if you have awareness, I mean, like it doesn't matter though. Cause if I was two feet away from you, like, like angry, you showcase the behavior at Brios. You said it perfectly. They just come in, no vector change, just land, get out in a beacon undersuit with no weapons equipped at an, like that's, are, are those the people complaining? Because they're, they're not doing anything to help themselves anyway. So yeah. whether I have a scope glint or whether I'm two feet away from them around the corner, like I could, I could literally be in the kiosk, like bam, right. I could do that. That's, that's even a more surefire way to get anybody. Are we supposed to have like, are we supposed to like, Hey, I'm in here. Like, I are think, we, <laughs> think we going to have easy, sense? I, I think a good way to like fix this. And I, I thought about this a couple of times. I, I want to mention it. I want to put it up on the spectrum as well, but like removing this, the optic glint and everything. If you really want to like use, there's a new scanning system coming in as well. It's in squadron 42. And like, they could really use that to basically do exactly what they're trying to do. And it could be as simple as like every spot, every like uh, bunker, every uh, little trade out post and stuff like that. If I'm gonna set up a trade outpost, I'm probably gonna set up. Uh, well, have, right now they have armistice zones. So instead of an armistice zone, why don't you just have a scanning network that constantly pulses every I don't know five to ten minutes, and when it pulses, it gives you hey life form at that direction. Can't give you an exact one because it's just in the little outpost, but it will tell you like within 500 to 800 meters, there is something out there that direction. If you had that in an outpost and you could link into it like on your way in, and it could be like beep, oh hey guys there. That gives me yeah. the ability to, you know, scan around. I got a around. ping. I don't, I don't, yeah, a exactly. A life form is yeah. out there. Oh. And that, is, for me, it tells me I got to get out a certain distance, which makes that shot ex exceedingly hard to get outside the sensor range of, say, an outpost or whatever, like Jump Town or yeah. Rios or something like that. And then as, a, as say, like, as a, a new FPS or, say, a, you know, somebody out there, say, if I do get a ping, it's like, hey, there's a guy 800 meters. There's something out there 800 meters that way. Cool. Now I know that when I park my ship, I'm going to park the door away from that, pointing towards the door so I have a better chance of getting in there. Sell my stuff, get out there, good to go. If I'm in there for long enough, picking up new shit, cool. Ping again. Hey, he moved over to the northeast. Now you know he's there. Cool, mm -hmm. whatever. I, 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 got, I got options, you know? Like, it, that's a point. That's, that's it right there, Weasel. Scope Glint feels lazy. 
It is. What if there was 10 other ways to get a sniper? What if I had a, what if I could link in, if I have standing, right? Or like I, I, I can patch into that sensor, like, like to go to Brio's, maybe you even need, you need to patch into those sensors that are there. Or, I said, so like, say, so you think, don't need to patch in. Say like Brio's, for instance, Outlaw Outpost, Jump Town, Outlaw Outpost. I can't get access to that network until I'm inside that place. And ah. I've, ta I've taken it or I'm in there. I go, hey, okay, I've got the sensor package. Now I link it to mine and now I can get a direct sensor package. But if, say, like you're at Jump Town, another org pushes in there, takes it from you because they knew that you were on the sensors. They knew they had about a five to 10 minute window to basically make the assault, which makes it fast paced, makes it exciting. So as they push in there, they take their airlock, they get the building, they get control, but now they have control of the sensor package. No one else is coming in there unless they ping it to that ship with a new permission system that they just added, that they're adding to the resource management mm -hmm. where you can go, hey, my engineer can have this kind of access. My uh, my party members can get inside my ship. Okay, cool. My party members now have the same scanner uh -huh. access as I do. Because you, you control that area, like you, yes. you've got on the inside. That makes sense. See, and then at the same awesome. time, they've got the mini-map system that is like what Hoots was saying. You've got mini-map that has fog of war, is what they were kind of describing at CitizenCon. Whereas I find these areas, I have that sensor stuff. If I want to share it, I can with certain members of my party, of oh, my board. That would be or I can amazing. sell that information. Now, if I could do that the exact same and go, hey, I have access to this scanner and one of my pings, I can send my pings and you can get them just as often as I can. But once another org or another individual takes that console, he can now wipe it like, I don't know, the medical system where we have like, you know, if uh, somebody sets up the Carrick or whatever and I go, hey, these guys are, you know, mapped to this Carrick. If I get into that Carrick and get to that, that little suite, I can go wipe and it kills all that. Their, their DNA is not longer there and now I can take the ship. They've already got the systems there. Just continue iterating on it and don't add stupid shit like scope glint. Or if you do, again, add counters for it like gadgets. So again, there's like 20 different ways that a sniper could fuck up. Well, think, think about what's in the game right now. Like if, if you were a, a new player, what could we tell a new player right now so they don't get sniped? Like there's actions you can take. We don't need to build a game mechanic around this. There's action. That's what I think is frustrating me, Hoots, is that it feels lazy and it's not really a counter to anything. If somebody doesn't have the awareness, they're going to get shot anyway, whether it's point blank or at 800 meters with a scope glint. Like it, the awareness is key. So if you're selling illicit cargo, right, you should know, is the comma ray up? The comma ray is down. Okay, I'm going to approach this differently, and I'm on approach, and I'm pinging my scan. I'm a solo player. I don't want to get sniped or ambushed, so I'm going to see what's the issue here. Oh, I see two empty ships here. Cutlass Black, or I, I, I passed the Cutlass Blue. A player-controlled Cutlass Blue on the way in. Right then, you're, you're already screwed. You're in their net, right? Like... Is there a scope glint from a Cutlass Blue from orbit so I know not to jump in there? Like, you jump That's into the Brio's. The answer is almost always run away because yeah. you have the most risk out of that trade. You're the one with the cargo. Exactly. A ship full of shit. So be aware. You see that. You just, <laughs> like, why are we doing a scope left? glint? Yeah, like, if well, I know, exactly. like, That's there's why. somebody here. Like, I'm like, dude, there's, I've been here before. Like, there's snipers that like to sit here. Who's, is that what you're saying? Like, because of the fact that, all right, so are you getting at the fact that, like, the uh, the sniper has zero risk and he can just sit there all day and then, like, the trader that has, like, all the stuff he has, he basically assumes all the risk? In almost every scenario I can think of, this, the most risk a sniper has is actually getting to their hide. Whether they go on vehicle, they go on foot, that's, that's their, and they risk the gear that they have on their body. So that was hinted on in the last like ISC as well when he was bringing this up or the uh, Star System Live. He was like, you know, uh, sniping at uh, Jump Town is degenerate behavior. And what he meant by that, it wasn't called snipers degenerates. He was saying that like, basically there are people that just go to Jump Town, don't take the mission, don't do anything. They have no other goal in mind other than sitting there and sniping players. And hey, for me, I say allow it because it, it's a fucking sandbox. Like yeah. you should be able to do that. Because then they got to do it for everything else, right? Exactly. And then, uh, like, in that scenario, 
yes, you are taking a lot of risk when you go to jump town and that's what makes it kind of fun. Like that's what made original jump town fun is that there was a, an exploit or a mechanic that malfunctioned and it was basically like, Hey, these drugs are here unlimited and you can make a fuckload of money off of it, but you can't QT to it. So you got to know how to get there. Once you get there, there's a good chance that you're going to get ambushed because other people know about it. And if somebody blows you up with your cargo hold full, you lose it. It's gone. So like, and you now have to go back and go do it again. So like it adds that kind of mechanic. Like if you want to engage in that gameplay, go do it. And you know that there are the risks like Daps is saying that you could be end up having this, but if you do pull it off, Oh dude, yeah. you've made like fucking 20, like 20 mil. Like you're fucking set. The, the thing that they fucked up with jump town is making it that little stupid, like one fucking pillbox at a time. Like that's fucking retarded. Yeah. Dude. Like it's, if they do the scope, Clint, like, you know what I think is degenerate behavior is people that wear a beacon undersuit and go kill people in their gladius. If For if sure. if sniping sure. at jump town in a beacon undersuit and a couple mags, if that's degenerate behavior, then what else? I think dropping an A2 bomb and exploiting a gravity grid on 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 uh SBK is a degenerate behavior. How about the god's eye for bounty hunters? Yeah, I think combat logging is degenerate behavior. I think I think scoping over Brios and finding out like there's people there and then dipping out and then logging to a new server, that is also degenerate behavior. I'm well, what going to take something you said earlier and, and mix it in with mix my it. point of view. Mix. Scope glint is a lazy answer to lazy gameplay. That's how yes. I feel. Yeah. yeah I mean, me, the sniping, sniping is, lazy. is mostly lazy. Yeah, it's just, yeah I'm just going to go ambush somebody. But yeah. that's a sandbox and you can do it. Just like, I'm just going to go. You still do it, but there'll be glint this time. I think what they should do is <laughs> yeah. add mechanics like Put what a we're glint. talking about. Like, like glint if they're looking directly into the light or and have the uh, counteracts for it. Have, if you're lazy enough to do that and you didn't grab all the mechanics and you're just wearing a beacon undersuit, yeah, dude, you're going to get seen. One, because you're wearing solid white. Two, because you got a, a giant optic with no other attachments to it and you're just trying to get a quick shot off. Hey, look, glint. Cool. Go kill him. Um, but yeah, like add more mechanics. Don't. Like, and, and add on to the mechanics that you're building already, like the mini map system, like it has, they were showing the fact that when enemies started shooting in the Syscon video, they popped up on the mini map. Use that. Like, that yeah. is so much more of a, like a better fucking thing. Like, make it to where like, I don't know shit about jump town or the area around it until I get to jump town and I do consecutive rings around it. I unlock part of that map. Now I've. I've, I've mapped the train or one of my other org members has done it and he sends me that cool now I've got a, a map of the area like what we make and then when something happens in that area like a sniper shoots ping yeah hey, like he's over there it, let me ask you this should the eclipse bomber have a glint so you know it's coming no. like yeah. the, uh, the the eclipse bomber <laughs> is the same thing in the air as a sniper on the ground the Eclipse Bomber is in the hands of civilians in the game. You can buy it with real money and not spend. I could buy, I could log on right now, create a new account, or a new player could come in and buy an Eclipse Bomber. Day one. Day one. That's the, de that's degenerate. They allow for degenerate behavior in this game. That's legitimately degenerate behavior, right? That now. is, bro. Yes, like, I got two minutes. I got two minutes. Out. All right. But like, that's the point is like, yeah, it's not lazy gameplay. Well, you, it's gameplay. It's there. You don't need if I want to be a sniper. All at once, right? It's one bite at a time. Yeah, but like they got they got to prioritize what they do. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I know I appreciate that you're defending CIG because it can get a little one sided in here because we're so passionate. But like, I, this to me, this is not the way. I want it to be balanced. I want it to make sense though, because it give me. Why don't I know if I want to jump to an OM? Do I know there's a Cutlass Black? Or, or a Cutlass Blue, excuse me. Or do I know there's a Manta? We, we should put intergalactic glints on spaceships. Don't say that. You get a glint. You get a glint. So I can see it. Like, what the Actually, fuck? Like, wh why, why have a stealth bomb? You can do that for Manta's actually now. You can see quantum that. snares now. Yeah, yeah. That, that's cool. Because why? There's yeah. an actual comm array system that's supposed to connect intergal... Like, there's comms. Like, there's technology that's feeding information and data to the whole system of Stanton.
That would be a cool way to interlock that uh, scanning material that I said for the outpost too. Is like if the comrade is up, everyone has access to all the like the the outposts inside that comrade. But if the comrade is down, you actually have to get onto the yeah. point. Or and, like, a jammer. And, like, it's being yes. jammed, which right. means somebody's there, right? Like there's indicators. If the comrade is down and you go to Brio's breaker yard, you're kind of asking for it. Yeah, that's your glint, right, dude? Like. And that, that comes with experience. That That's something that the veteran yes. guys know. That yeah, we earned. Either, you're and now the new players are going to get a glint. Yeah. But that allows Fuck somebody em. to learn something about the game. Like, that's the <laughs> cool thing about Star Citizen is that, like, there is literally, like, a fuckload that you have to learn. And when you do finally learn it, it's kind of like, oh, dude, like, I'm you know, I'm a Star Citizen. Like, I know this shit now. Dude, if it's in the game, it's, it's not degenerate. If you developed it, you're the degenerate, CIG. Jesus Christ. Like, you're going to call a sniper degenerate? You're going to call someone in an Eclipse bomber degenerate? Like, it's literally a stealth bomber. It's in the game to be invisible. It's there. But you don't put a glint on that one. Where's the balancing? If you're going to balance one, balance all of them. Or put an Idris in the game and put a limited amount of fuel in that bitch so someone can't steal it. This will and be do like, a degenerate behavior. Like, oh! Like last things I say, but... uh. Like the the comment of uh, degenerate behavior was made by a deaf, and he later recanted and said, "Like this is what I <laughs> yeah, meant by it." And I fully I fully understand it. It th there is absolutely no hate to any of these devs. Like you guys are doing an awesome job. We just we really passionate about the game. We just want to see. It's not hate. It's see, just like simple mechanics come in, and I'm just a douchebag. Main premise of uh, <laughs> oh, against like all of this is to continue to give ideas to this growing game that yeah. we truly absolutely love and like we hope to tough God, conversation like some people can like listen to it gain an idea from it using existing mechanics and have that constructive criticism comment and push forward from it because this game can be so fucking amazing and even in the, that right now even two years ago there there's so many moments where you're just like you gotta stop and you're just like holy shit like this is a fucking amazing game if you guys heard the hell divers like the one of their latest uh, debacles with the around hell divers, and th this is a little bit out of date. A couple of weeks ago, but they nerfed a bunch of stuff. They update, they balance their game, and the dev said, "This is supposed to be difficult. Like at these higher level difficulties, players were bitching and moaning that they couldn't god tier walk in there by themselves and do the hardest difficulty in the game because they nerfed the loadouts and it's impossible." And the devs were like, yeah, that's the hardest difficulty. So I, why can't, I, like, that's the kind of dev response I want. Is like, this is the way the game is. What if somebody said, this is an open world sandbox. Stanton is a, a, a system full of crime. Suck it up. Get good. Like, <laughs> that's basically what they said to the player base. Uh, I'm, it would be awesome to see if Star Citizen did that, but it's harder when they spend... I gotta peace out. But hey guys, let's uh, we're gonna end it. Okay. Angry Weasel. You guys can see me on Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, all that good stuff. Angry underscore weasel. That's where you can find me. Appreciate y'all. It, it'll be put in the bottom too. You'll see it right here. Yeah. And then um let's let Angry bounce out. And then I wanna give the football back to Hoots for the final say and he can close us out. But Angry. Yeah. Love you, Hoots. Love see you, you bro. See you later. Peace homie. Angry Weasel, y'all. That look at that. Now we're all big. Dude, our faces just got bigger. Yeah, pixels. All right, dude. All things said, if you made it through this podcast, we love you. And me and Hoots are bros. We're actually meeting up IRL eventually, whenever that happens. But we we got plans for stogies and drinks and like. So if you see us, this is what I think is funny. Hoots is like a lot of people just don't know how to disagree anymore, passionately without ruining their relationships. Right. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe most people are good at that. But anyway. Yeah. I want to give no, you the no, football though. You've been hearing my passion. I love that you're backing up CIG because in reality, this all comes from the same desire for the game to succeed, right? So hit me. What's your final thought? Yeah, I think I think there are just so many perspectives, and none can be declared as the the one true correct perspective. I think CIG has a lot of smart people having a lot of meetings discussing variables and tweaks and changes and that they agree that this is a good direction i'm more into like i've had ideas about star citizen just hearing about it over the years 
and I've seen them do things I'm like, damn, they did that better than I, I, I would have thought about. They did it in a different way, like a, a surprising way. So I'm, I'm more open to be surprised by where it goes. I'm kind of waiting to see what comes down the pipe because I'm not building a game. I might have an idea of the perfect game I want to play in my head, but I, I really want to see what these guys build. So far, I like the game they've built. So far, they've made some kind of odd choices that sort of teeter on ridiculousness, but like, I, I, I really just want to see where it goes. You know, I've been playing it pretty consistently for the past three years. It's a game with seemingly very little content that you can really lose yourself playing somehow some way they crack that that code right so agree yeah i'm just i'm just kind of open to see what they do man yeah and let me be clear here i've been playing for six plus years like playing like the cig you guys could look like i've had some dry spells every now and then because life i wasn't able to game a lot at all but uh i played a lot look at my account cig it's just daft hobbit it's just, like I'm not coming at this from like not I'm not just bitching like I've played a lot of your game and I hope my ideas could be used in some way and maybe I don't express them in the best way like I'm very abrasive I'm very frustrated with a lot of things but also keep in mind that that comes from running an org I feel it's impossible to run a group of players uh, and not feel obligated for the time that they're taking to play with you Right. If I if I schedule an op and Hoots is getting a taste of this now because we pulled you into some administrative stuff and you know you you kind of feel up when when you've been with the group for a while like you from the beginning basically and some of our other guys like Vesper and Knock like it's hard not to play Star Citizen and, and kind of feel obligated for the us as a group to do some cool shit right Yeah you feel responsible for people having a yeah. fun time you know if you're trying to create content yeah. Yeah, and it kind of, it, it's a burden. So anybody running an org, like, just know that you get burnt out. And I, I think I'm approaching a burnout place. Like, I, I got to chill out, right? Like, but I also don't. Like, I don't think I should chill out. Because, like, th they should, in all honesty, CIG, you've done fantastic. We're patient. I mean, I've been waiting. I, I got into PC gaming because of Star Citizen. I was watching it from day one i think i found it like almost day one like 2013 is when i got like I, f I found it on youtube or being pitched and i was like oh man i can't wait till the day i get a, a, P a P pc you know because i was broke as shit <laughs> so anyway I, I got one in like yeah. 2017 18 and i've been playing star citizen the moment i plugged it in i downloaded it you know like that was the first thing i downloaded i didn't even like like I didn't even set up it. nothing. I just downloaded Star Citizen Play. So um, that's where this comes from. It's like I, I there's a lot of other org into people in orgs, people that run communities that kind of feel the same way. Um, now we we specialize in ground FPS, and so I want to shout out like Zach Priest, who's been in our Discord, ask asking us these questions. He brought he got our opinion on the uh, scope glint. And I, we gave it to him and very professionally. I don't think we said anything negative about it. I'm a little bit different when I'm on the mic, but uh, it all comes from a place of love for the CIG devs. I fucking love the game you've made as much as we, we meme on it. Like I, I love Chris Roberts vision. I think it's cool what he's done. Like who else has raised this much money for a crowdfunded game? Like he's onto something, you know? Um, so just to get that off my chest, like that's where I'm at. I just, I, I face burnout. I think I, it's, it's really hard to plan something and, and have everybody, you know, we got guys that have newborn babies that are like, you know, taking away time from being a dad. Like you have kids, hoods and work and life. And we try to be as efficient as possible with our group and, and how we get on and play and respect each other's times. Cause you can really waste each other's times in star citizen orgs. Um, so maybe that's like another topic we could do for another day. Another episode is like how to avoid, how to find a good org, what you should look for. And if you're, if you're playing with a group of people, like what, what do you look for in an org? What can you avoid? Like off the mistakes of people who've been in multiple orgs and spent so much time and energy trying to play star citizen and fill the gaps. That's where our frustration comes from. So 
yeah, to me, I, I think I think this is a poor execution on a lot of stuff. I'm excited for all the new things, though. Holy, we didn't even talk about all the cool shit. So let's do so let's do next episode. Let's do it soon, and let's just do a cool shit episode. Let's just gas up Star Citizen. I, I want to show the audience that I can hold my negative comments. <laughs> Tell you a- what, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a list. I need you to cross out all <laughs> the ones you hate. That way, I'll have a yeah. good working list. You could just read it off. I'll be like, Mm-mm. yeah. Mm-mm. Uh, Mm-mm. Def's curated list of his favorite features. Yeah. Spectrum. Yeah. Dude, can, can you imagine how <laughs> thick the skin of a SIG employee must be? They're like they got to be like armadillos at this point. I honestly think they avoid it. I think they're in a vacuum. Think, I, I well, at, at least the the public yeah. facing ones, the ones that are more vocal, like Zach Priest, dude. Shout out to Zach Priest. We should clip this and ping him, like yeah, dude. Zach and like you know because he's asking for Crew. feedback. Yeah, like yeah. there's people yeah. out there and like Exodor. Yeah, and like, I want to go to Citizen Con. I'm going this year. I've already made a goal. And I want to go meet people. And I want to go bitch to their face. Because I'm not a coward. <laughs> I'm not trying to put the game down. I want the game to succeed so bad. I would love... Uh, I would love it if you took Avenger 1 as like a consultant. Like, get him in there. There's a lot of content creators that you probably consult with. I'm sure there's communities that give input. But like, uh, I would love to consult in some way, shape, or form if we can make that happen, but let's, let's let it happen. Like let us get a following of people and then we'll, we'll bring it to the table. But ah, dude, I, we just love it, man. So anyway, who's been spicy. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? No, not really. Right I on. We, we, we talked about a lot. We covered a lot. And we did. Um, and I, I got my bitch out. So now I'm going to go play star citizen and have a yeah, good time now, with the boys. Now you're dude. all woo sign zen. You're like, oh, I'm so I'm like, immersed. Uh, Look at I that. feel I feel heard. Maybe scope glint is a good idea. I don't know. Mm. Who can say? I mean, we're still going to try it out. You know, we're still going to. BP is still going to BP. Exactly. Scope glint or not, I'm just going to bitch about it. That's what Marines Bobbing do. Bobbing and weaving, adapting. That's in my hair. That's kind of what we do. Well, cool. I got a phone call coming in, but uh, take us out, Hoots. You know the phrase. Phrase? What phrase are you talking about? Where are we going to see him? In the verse. No, fuck that, dude. That, this see? podcast is on the ground. We'll see you on the ground. <laughs> I, yeah. I'll, I'll never remember. I'm just going to make up a different one. That's I'm going to type it to you. Yeah, that, no, I'm just okay. Different, <laughs> okay. Different phrase after every one. All right. All right. You're crumbling cookies. I'm, I'll am see you on the ground. Hoots will crumble Stay your cookie. San Diego. <laughs> all right. That's it. Peace. Peace. <laughs>